Hello, my name is Derek Ostevic and welcome to day 35 of the Lent Project. It's Tuesday, March 19th, and it's St. Joseph Day. And I was quite surprised to discover that our journey towards Lent takes a bit of a different turn uh, today in our reading and prayers. Instead of looking forward to the cross and what Jesus has done or did for us, we take a look back at the very beginning of his life the conception of his life, um, and that through the eyes of his father, Joseph. So uh, if you can go ahead and pause the movie right now and take a moment um, to prepare your heart and mind to hear from God what he would have for us uh, today. Okay, let's begin. Um, this is from 1 John 1, verses 8 and 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. This is from Psalm 34. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them all. He protects all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. I think it's just so interesting to think about Joseph, how he could have really ruined Mary's life, but he chose not to. It kind of gives us a glimpse into the character of, of who he is. And if you really think about it, Joseph... Um, was the first person to realize, to know that God was fulfilling the promise of a Messiah. And he had nine months to think about it. And it's just really incredible to me as we sit here and we prepare during this Lent season to uh, remember what Jesus did for us, for the sins of all of us here on the earth, that Joseph had a very similar experience while he waited for Jesus to be born. He had this understanding of what God was going to do, a unique understanding that no one else had. And he got to sit on that. And not only that, but he also kind of put his life on hold. He put his marriage on hold. He put everything on hold while he waited for this promise to come true. 
And I just think that's really incredible and amazing. And it, it speaks to the character of Joseph. And I think that we can learn from him when we look at who he was and how he responded to the news that he was given by God. Go ahead now and take a moment and pause and reflect uh, on today's reading. We're going to finish out our time now with a song to the Lamb from Revelation. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is our simple prayer today to carry us through the day. A prayer that perhaps we'll whisper to ourselves as we experience our day today. It's Holy Spirit, give me enduring faith. Thanks everyone. Hope you have a great day.